Hi, I'm Paul Miguel, professional wildlife photographer, and in this video, I'm going to show you why this lens, the Canon 400 f5.6, is probably one of the best value lenses for wildlife photography. If you've got a 500 or a 600 mil, you're going to very quickly notice how heavy that is to lug around all day. This 400 f5.6, one of the best things about this lens, it's actually really light. You carry this around quite easily for most of the day, and if I hold it in one hand, with the camera body attached, you can actually see how light it is. I wouldn't want to do that for too long, but gives you an idea how light this lens actually is. That makes it an ideal lens if you're expecting to be hand-holding for long periods of time, or you really don't want to use a tripod. Personally, I've used this lens for about three or four years. I've got really sharp images out of it. Some of those images have been used in magazines, calendars, and through picture libraries, where they need to have a high degree of sharpness. So it's not going to be as sharp as a 500 f4 or a 300 f2.8. For the majority of photographers out there, I do believe that this lens is sharp enough. Focusing speed is another consideration as well. How fast does it focus? This is a fast focusing lens and it's, it's a professional Canon L lens, so it should be pretty good. Again, compared to a 500 or a 600 f4 or a 300 2.8, it's not going to be as fast for beginners. You know, I think the speed of focus on this lens is going to be absolutely fine. And if you play around with your focus points, middle or grouping, that might affect the speed to your advantage as well. In good light, I found this to be really good at tracking birds in flight. The only time it seems to let me down is when the light's poor in duller conditions. The focus definitely seems to be slower and that's where the bigger lenses really come into their own. Cost, of course, is a really important factor. A 500 or a 600 mil or a 300 f2.8 or even a 400 f4, all significantly more expensive than this lens. At the time of making this video, you can actually pick this lens up on eBay secondhand for getting close to 500 pounds. As with most telephoto lenses, the minimum focusing distance isn't very near. On this lens, it's 3.5 meters, so that's the closest that you can focus. It also has the focus limiter, so it will go from 3.5 meters to infinity, or you can switch it to 8.5 meters to infinity. And that can be really useful sometimes photographing birds in flight, which tend to be further away. So if you're on 3.5 to infinity, the lens is effectively using its whole range to focus. But if the bird is eight and a half meters or further and you switch to that, it's only gonna focus in that distance. So it's not focusing as far, the lens is doing less work. So I do find if I switch it to that, then the focus does seem to be a little faster. Like similar Canon lenses, it also has the lens hood, uh, which is quite decent in size. And that really does help to protect the lens and avoid flare. There's also the Canon 100 to 400 mil. There's the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. If you are looking to just to practice and maybe pick something up to get started, maybe Mark 1 would be good for you. But by all reviews, the Mark 2 is considerably sharper. So this is a great lens for hand holding, but there's no reason why you can't use it on a tripod as well. So all you need is to make sure you've got the right attachment. In this case, I've got a plate attached to the foot of the lens and I've got it on a gimbal head. So it gives you nice stability. So if you're not wanting to carry it around the whole time, or maybe you're gonna be sat in a hide waiting for long periods of time, then uh, no reason you can't use it on a tripod as well. So another option you've got available is actually to use an extender with this lens. So that's one way of getting more reach without paying a huge amount of money. Now you can add, as I've done here, a 1.4 extender to the 400 mil. What you need to be aware of is how it affects the focus. So if you're using an older, older camera body, then you'll lose the ability to autofocus. With a 1D, uh, 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, you should still be able to autofocus. I'm basically restricted to the middle. So once I attach the extender onto this lens, it only lets me focus in the middle. So if you're thinking of trying this lens with the extender, just make sure you absolutely check how it affects the focus. And there's another little addition you can use as well. So I mentioned the minimum focus of distance, which is three and a half meters. And sometimes you might want to be closer than that. And that's where you can use this little trick is to use an extension tube. So here I've got an extension tube between the camera body and the lens. There's no glass in the extension tube. It literally just increases the distance between the two and allows you to focus closer. So this is really useful for focusing a bit closer. But what it also does, interestingly, because you're reducing the minimum focusing distance, it actually will soften the background a little bit more. So 
it's not hugely noticeable um, but with a 25mm extension tube here it does actually improve the background slightly. I really do think this is an excellent all-around lens. I say I've used it myself for a few years now, been really happy with the results. I think it's perfect lens if you're a beginner or perhaps you're looking for that extra step up from the equipment you've already got. What makes this lens so good is just its all-around value. If you take into account the speed of focus, the overall quality of the images you get from it, the weight and also the cost, it just makes it an all-round really good value lens. The only really negatives I could say about this lens is it doesn't have much flexibility in that it's a fixed lens so it won't have the flexibility of a zoom and also in low light I do find the focus starts to struggle a little bit for me. But apart from that, absolutely fantastic. I thought this might be useful for some of you out there who are considering purchasing a lens for wildlife um, or maybe you're just looking for a bit of an increase in quality from what you've already got. So I definitely consider this lens really good value. So this video has been a bit different. Usually I'm out on about photographing wildlife and taking you along with me. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you next time. I'm being serenaded by skylarks. Share it on social, share it on social media, tell all your friends, invite them all for the party, etc, etc.